Okay, so do this lecture 12. Talking about the last lecture, we tried to cover the following topics, uh, application of biosensors in the diagnostics industry, particularly for uh, metabolites of interest like uh, urea, creatine, oxalate, glucose, adenosine, and so on and so forth. The different uh, gas-based sensors which are used for uh, taking blood sample and doing quick analysis of uh, one or more of these metabolites in uh, the, uh, the patient's blood sample. And uh, essentially, uh, we also tried to investigate a uh, little details about how the double layer uh, between two uh, phases of uh, solids or so solid and a liquid or a liquid and a liquid formulates and how there is a charge separation uh, which would lead to uh, a distribution of uh, uh, one phase uh, as a counter ion charges uh, in, uh, as, as bulk charge or diffuse layer. Uh, within the within uh, one of the phases, one of the interacting phases. So now uh, we would look into, and so we actually try to find out also the the potential in a one-dimensional model uh, of an electrode in contact with a solution, and try to estimate uh, the value of the potential um, from uh, by solving um, the one-dimensional uh, equivalent of the Poisson's equation for electric field okay for for potential. So essentially we got the density factor, the charge density, volume charge density rho equated to minus A D square of K e to the power of minus K x by 4 pi, right. D is the dielectric constant, I am sorry, K again is um, a constant which was put uh, as an equivalent of the total amount of charges e to the power minus kx, x is the direction in which uh, the potential has to be evaluated. Let me just write this a little more clearly here, uh, make it uh, x, okay. And A of course is the constant uh, in the solution of the potential equation with respect to x. So if you uh, really look at the surface charge density and uh, we also try to discuss this that you know in the electrode a very critical uh, parameter of importance is what is the charge density on the surface of the electrode. When we are talking about microflows, microfluidic channels, uh, the charge density essentially means the density of the dangling bonds which are there on the surface. If you have a silicon surface and you salinize it and get uh, it converted into SiOH and uh, then under a certain pH this converts into SiO minus the you know the, the charge density on the surface of such a, such a situation would essentially be a function of the bond density on the surface too. Okay. So now if you look at um, uh, or if you assume sigma to be the surface charge density of an electrode, okay. so the relationship between sigma and rho would really be sigma is integral minus of course rho times of dx okay, where uh, x varies between a and infinity. One thing which uh, I would like to illustrate here is how this equation is coming out is uh, from the fact that if you look into the principle of electrical neutrality, the charge which is there on the surface um, of the electrode is uh, should be equivalent to the total amount of charge and the volume of the solution uh, which forms an interface with this particular surface. Okay. So uh, with that logic, the surface density, density should be the negative of uh, the volume charge density of the solution and integral of that with respect to the distance x from the electrode. And uh, if you may recall, the outer Helmholtz layer is at a distance uh, equal to uh, let us say some value A which is the ion size parameter also. We can consider that to be what uh, you know is the beginning of this uh, let us say this uh, so called solvated ion shell. And then beyond that uh, the potential extends all the way up to infinity and so there is always a density uh, of charge mathematically possible up to infinity. So the charge density goes down of course uh, with the increase in x but it is never almost 0 it goes to a certain finite amount which is close to 0. Okay. So with that logic we can say that uh, sigma is minus rho dx integral uh, where x varies from a to infinity. So if you put the value of rho here from equation 2 and try to solve this equation uh, we are left with sigma equal to a d times uh, divided by 4 pi integral e to the power of minus kx dx 
integral varying between a and infinity. I just want to recall that I would like to recall that a is the ion size parameter. So, if you really have an electrode with a negative ion say here and uh, there is a plane here which contains all these different positive charges on the outer Helmholtz planes okay. And as it goes down the density slowly reduces into the bulk volume and this distance is x. So, the x really starts from where the solvated ion shell which is somewhere here starts which can be equivalent to the ion size parameter here a. So, from a to all the way to about infinity uh, we can find out what is the charge density by looking at really the rho the volume charge density and maintaining what you call the principle of electron neutrality okay. So, these are all positive charges and these are all the solvated ion solvated shell of thin water molecules. By the by this layer is only about of tens of nanometers okay. So, it is extremely small uh, tens of nanometers give me a minute here about 10 nanometers. So, if you solve this integral here you are left with a d k square by 4 pi integral a to infinity e to the power minus k x pi k of course, with the minus sign and uh, this would eventually convert into a d k square by 4 pi times of e to the power of minus k a by k in other words finally converting into a d k by 4 pi e to the power of minus k a okay that is what this is and from that we can estimate by looking at the surface tangency sigma the value of a and the coefficient in the solution of the Poisson's equation. So, a here would be represented as 4 pi sigma divided by d k and e to the power of k a okay that is how a can be represented and uh, essentially the potential function x which is also a e to the power of minus q x becomes 4 pi sigma by d k. d again is the dielectric constant of the medium in which uh, the solution is present. So, the solution normally is in an aqueous medium and so the medium is water and dielectric constant uh, would be the dielectric constant of water in CGS units. So, 4 pi sigma by d k e to the power of k a minus x okay that is what the potential function phi x would be. Interestingly it would be almost uh, uh, a very good thing to assume what the potential would be just close to the surface okay just close to the surface means where uh, the ion size parameter for the negative ion uh, ends almost okay. So, it is very close to the electrode surface where the solvated ion or solvated shell of these thin water molecules tens of nanometers they just just about start and uh, uh, there is where the a actually ends right the ion size parameter ends. So, at that particular parameter uh, the potential that is available really is nothing but the surface potential of the particular surface okay in question. And so, therefore, uh, if we put x equal to a in this particular equation for the potential equation 3 we should be able to get that as an estimate. So, let us look at what the potential function would be at x equal to a. So, it should be equal to 4 pi sigma by d k e to the power of 0 okay or 4 pi sigma by d k okay. So, this is also the surface potential close to where the solvation cell just about starts. So, this is the surface of interest and this is the solvation shell of water molecules uh, which start in this particular region and this is let us say the positive charges in the solution and there is a reduced order of these charges as it moves more into the bulk and uh, essentially goes all the way up to 0. And so, the electrode here is negatively charged and the ion size parameter can be somewhere very close to the surface let us say it is a. So, between a and 
x equal to infinity there is a charge distribution but at a the potential really is the surface potential. So, this concept should be very very clear in mind because this uh, we need to use or we will be using very often for determining what you call electrokinetic flows in some of the next modules all right. So, what we call this zeta potential or zeta of i uh, at 0. So, we call this the zeta potential of a surface. There are ways and means now of measuring the zeta potential of a surface of interest ok. Uh, initially for uh, any solid surface the, uh, the zeta potential uh, would be a very hard parameter to find out, but there are meters now available where this uh, measurement can be made. Interestingly also for uh, nanoparticles ok, particles uh, whose sizes are less than 100 nanometers the surface potential forms a very interesting you know aspect because it always uh, is a result or it is it always uh, is uh, leading to the, uh, the, the discretization of these particles and it always prevents aggregation. So, a very important aspect in making nanoparticles is how you can change the zeta potential of the surface and you can use variety of surfactants or a variety of materials which kind of coat the surfaces in a manner that uh, you have uh, a certain potential associated with the surface and if you have uniquely similar uh, potentials across all the other nanoparticles which are available they hardly coagulate ok. So, just to give you an idea of how important this zeta potential is whether it is a plane surface or the surface of a nanoparticle or any other surface ok uh, zeta potential of an extreme importance. So, with this we kind of have a very good idea now how a surface would behave with respect to you know a solution. Uh, I would now go to uh, directly almost into the various electrokinetic phenomena that are available and that can be used for a lot of uh, you know micro flow related situations ok. So, what is uh, what are those electrokinetic phenomena ok. So, let us uh, look at some of the definitions in order to begin with uh, uh, this new topic and it is very much related to you know the, the earlier topic on zeta potential of a particular surface. So, electrokinetic properties are associated with the phases in contact with each other and are of particular significance for microflows ok. So, whenever there are two, two or more phases which are in contact with each other there is almost always these properties of charging which comes into picture. So, uh, one or more of these interfering or participating surfaces interfacing surfaces uh, develops uh, some kind of a charge ok. So, applying an EMF across such an intercept interface uh, causes movements of all the phases with respect to one another ok, while force movement of phases produces characteristic EMF ok. So, thus the cause and effect are interchangeable and altogether all electrokinetic effects can be summarized uh, as either motions caused by imposed EMF or EMF produced by the movement of phases ok. So, in one cause or in one uh, in one kind of phenomena you impose an EMF or, or put a potential or subject a potential and try to study the flow or the motion to the charges or the charge separation of the double layer which happens ok. In another instance you are basically producing an EMF by forcing a certain interface over another uh, which develops this uh, dual layer charging. So, there are uh, four different mechanisms which can be categorized into these two subtypes. One is motion caused by the imposed EMF, uh, this category involves or it, it includes electrosmosis ok. And uh, definitionally electrosmosis is really principle by which liquid caused to move through a static diaphragm with micro capillaries across the diaphragm occurs ok. So, due to electrosmosis uh, it generates uh, some kind of a driving pressure which causes liquid to move automatically through static diaphragm or a set of micro capillaries. So, we will investigate this process uh, um, a little bit in details in the following slides. The other phenomena of motion caused by imposed EMF is really a motion of charged particles in a medium ok on subjecting to an electro, uh, electric field. So, this is also known as electrophoresis ok. So, solid particles caused to move through a stationary liquid when it is subjected to such an external EMF or such an external electric field. The other two phenomena of importance uh, and these four phenomena are really important for sensing and microfluidic applications is basically those which are categorized in the subtype of 
uh, the case where EMF is produced by forcing uh, using pressure driven flows uh, one fluid or one interface on other surface. So, one such phenomena is called the streaming potential. So, it is a potential produced by liquid being forced through a diaphragm or through a set of micro capillaries in the diaphragm. Okay. So, if you are forcing this liquid um, phase over a solid phase essentially uh, with some kind of a diaphragm which has all these micro capillaries. So, you are forcing them with several micro capillaries it causes a potential because of the flowing fluid. It is also known as the streaming potential. The other uh, important effect is sedimentation potential. It is used very often in the chemical industry. So, this is uh, the potential produced by the free fall of particles through a liquid. So, this is a gravity driven fall of uh, particulate matter in a liquid which would cause a certain amount of potential and this can give information about the weight of those particles or, or the rapidity with which they would sediment or settle down. So, this is also known as the Dawn effect. Okay. So, we would uh, be more interested in studying just uh, a few types actually these three in more details about how a motion can be caused by EMF or a EMF can be caused by motion. Okay. So, let us uh, look into a little more details of uh, uh, the first process that is electrosmosis. Okay. So, uh, by definition again a diaphragm through which a liquid is forced may be regarded as comprising of a series of micro capillaries. Okay. So, we have a situation here where you are pushing fluid through a set of micro capillaries. Okay. So, let us look into this first process electrosmosis and uh, as you know by definition uh, Electrosmosis really is a case where liquid is pushed through a set of micro capillaries. A diaphragm, uh, we, it can be considered as a as a bunch of different micro capillaries through which a liquid is forced into. Okay, so this around the internal surface of these capillaries, there exists a double layer of separated charges because of the flow of fluid, which is pushed through these set of micro capillaries. So this situation can be uh, represented here, as you can see in this figure here, that you have a flow which is uh, of this water and this is let us suppose the span of the capillary. Okay. So, this essentially is the is uh, the, the span of uh, the particular micro capillary into question. Okay. Let me just put it a little more appropriately uh, from here all the way to here is what the radius of the capillary is. The length across which we want to investigate this uh, dual layer charging is let us say L. Okay from one end to the other end of the capillary. So, what would happen immediately is uh, as you know that uh, these are pressure driven flows and it causes a no slip zone. So, very near to the surface in this particular area or region there would be a zero velocity. So, there is a plane of no slip. Okay. That is true for this uh, other end of the surface as well where there is no velocity or there is no slip between the fluid layer and the liquid. Okay. Now, let us suppose uh, the dual layer really formulates a little bit away from this particular positively charged surface. Let us suppose that the charges on the surface are all positive in this particular case and the dual layer is formulated by this negative charges which almost always comes into the solution and extends back into the bulk. So, you have to be careful though in this case that you know positive really means uh, electron less. Okay. So, there are the, the surface is devoid of electrons whereas, negative in the solution would be always in ionic state. So, the ions are almost always bigger than if there are holes. Okay. So, the same phenomena would happen if the electrode is a positively charged electrode and uh, the surface um, or, or the solution has negatively charged ions. Whatever is in the solution is of a bigger size if you consider the the charge equivalence there is almost always the formation of a diffuse layer because whatever is in the solution whether it is a positive charge or a negative charge is always going to be of bigger size. If the electrode is positive it is by positive by virtue of the electron because it is electron devoid okay, by virtue of it being electron devoid. So, essentially it is a hole it is an electron less state. Uh, so, therefore, there is no way almost that you can neutralize the total charge whether it is positive or negative on the surface of the electrode by the charge that is in a solution. Solution charges are almost always of finite size whether it is a positive or a negative ion. A negative ion is much 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 bigger than the 
but the, then the neutral state of, of the species itself okay whereas positive charge is a little smaller but then it is no way comparable to the size of an electron okay so there is almost always the, uh, the development of this diffuse layer of charges so here we consider uh, let's say an emf which is applied external to this capillary so there is an emf because of uh, by virtue of this battery which is applied uh, as you can see here by means of a series of batteries in the circuitry. So, what do you think will happen? There would be a tendency of this negative ions to move towards the positive electrode, right? So, as the fluid is moving in this particular direction with the, you know uh, V and it has occupied the whole capillary and after that let us say we have uh, removed the pressure and so there is no driving of the fluid anymore. And when we apply the EMF, uh, the negative charges should start flowing towards the positive of the battery, right? And uh, let us assume that uh, the velocity of flow in this case is V. Okay. So, let us say that the velocity of flow in this particular case is V okay. because it is a negative charge and it is flowing in the opposite direction this velocity is V. So, uh, from a point of no slip very close to this surface this particular outer Helmholtz layer uh, where the first line of charge and the counter ionic charge comes into existence and the solvation layer has just ended uh, moves at a velocity v. So, the velocity gradient here okay, if we assume the total double layer thickness to be delta. So, the velocity gradient is essentially v by delta all right. Now, we know for Newtonian fluids the shear stress which develops between the different layers is actually equivalent or it is proportional to the velocity gradient du by dy in this case. Okay and the constant of proportionality there is nothing but that none other than the viscosity of the medium in the nita okay so that's what uh, newton's law states let me write this a little more clearly viscosity to the velocity gradient so let us think about this case here where this particular helmholtz layer has started moving so before it uh, got to start to move uh, it would have to undergo the necessary shear stress okay, uh, to create this velocity gradient v by delta right. So, essentially we can calculate that uh, you know this in this particular case can be represented as nita times of v by delta. So, this is the amount of stress that is needed the amount of stress or amount of force per unit area that is needed to shear the out the outer Helmholtz plane with respect to this layer of no slip. Okay, which is uh, present close by as the inner solvation cell close to the surface. So, you have single molecules of water uh, which is very close to these bunch of positive charges and uh, that is the inner solvation shell uh, which separates on the counter ionic cloud the negative counter ionic cloud from the positive vacancies on the top of the electrodes. And uh, so, V by delta essentially is the velocity gradient and nita times of V by delta is what the shear stress would be for such a layer separation to occur uh, when the fluid starts moving. Okay. So, uh, let us assume also uh, a potential gradient and uh, if the length here is L and you have applied uh, a voltage between these two points same as the voltage given by the batteries uh, here as E then the electric field in that case the potential gradient which is also the electric field. Okay. Uh, electric field is E by L okay. E is the EMF you have to remember this is not the, the electric field but the EMF the voltage that is applied between the two points of the capillary okay. so this end and the other end here of the capillary. So, that is what uh, the electric field really is. It's 
just delete this portion away that is what the electric field really is okay between these two ends. Uh, so, this can be represented by some term x here all right. So, in order for the potential gradient to move the fluid the shear stress should really be equal to the electrical force uh, to the charge per unit area. So, uh, let us suppose uh, the, uh, the, the charge density on the electrode surface in this case the surface of the channel or the micro capillary is uh, sigma. So, sigma times x really is nothing but the uh, the electrical force to the charge per unit area. Let us assume let us let us try to imagine the dimensional consistency here sigma here is charge per unit area it is the surface charge density and x here is the electric field. So, electric field which is x in this case times of charge is the force and so this is force per unit area. So, in order for this uh, layer to be mobile the total amount of electrical force per unit charge area to the charge per unit area which is needed would be equivalent to the shear stress that would allow the separation to happen and the fluid in the micro capillary to move ahead ok. So, uh, all said and done we can find out relationship between sigma and uh, all the other parameters that n v by delta x here and also uh, from the earlier derived equation on zeta potential that we had found out just about few slides back uh, zeta came out to be equal to 4 pi delta divided by d times of sigma ok. Delta here if you may recall was uh, the total the thickness of the of the diffuse layer right and d here was the dielectric constant sigma was, was the surface charge. So, in terms of zeta potential uh, we can very well write this uh, particular equation as 4 pi delta by d times of neta uh, v by delta x right. So, these deltas go away and we are left with 4 pi neta v by d x which is the zeta potential on the surface ok. So, uh, the velocity of flow in this case v uh, would really be equal to nothing but zeta potential times dielectric constant times the electric field external electric field times of divided by 4 pi into the viscosity neta of the medium. And uh, if uh, we assume uh, the field to be 1 volts per centimeter uh, or we assume an electric field of unity value then we are left with uh, a velocity which is also known as the mobility of electrosmosis or the electrosmotic mobility. zeta d by 4 pi neta ok. So, it is essentially the velocity per unit electric field. Uh, so, it gives an idea of uh, how mobile uh, the liquid phase within the micro capillary would be uh, by this principle of electrosmosis per unit field uh, external field that is applied to the capillary. This is also known as u 0 ok. And uh, we can further do some analysis because when we talk about micro flows uh, and you know capillaries associated with these kind of flows uh, we need parameters like uh, the flow rate ok. And uh, velocity essentially is nothing but the flow rate per unit area as uh, we all know from our fluidics background right. So, volume flow rate q divided by let us say some area would represent the, the velocity. So, here also if we assume phi to be the flow rate the volume flow rate let us say volumetric flow rate and let us say small q to be the area of cross section of the small capillary ok. So, therefore, v essentially is q by phi by q right and that comes out to be zeta d x by 4 pi neta. So, uh, this is how you can represent in terms of flow rate and area of cross section in any micro capillary the relationship between 
the mobility and you know the flow rate and area of cross section okay so uh, we can further uh, make it um, or change this equation to gauge the zeta potential zeta as 4 pi neta phi by dx times of q okay so these are all measurable quantities except this x here which i would just uh, be changing in a little bit and uh, zeta essentially can be found out from this equation for any surface in combination with any liquid so that if for a certain commentarial of two interfaces we can find out the zeta potential by this method where neta is the viscosity of the liquid phase phi is the flow rate uh, which is obtained because of electrosmosis d is the dielectric constant q is the area of cross section of the capillary microcapillary or the channel through which all this flow is taking place and x here essentially is the field and we would just in about uh, a little bit see how this field can be predicted in terms of current per unit the conductivity okay so you as we know from ohm's law uh, you know the way that resistance is defined is rho l over a rho is the specific uh, resistivity l is the length a uh, the particular medium a is the cross sectional area of the medium between two contacts okay of which the resistance has to be measured now this can also be written down as the inverse of k uh, the electrical conductivity times of l by a okay so this is essentially the electrical conductivity it's the inverse of electrical resistivity which in this case would be close to so so we can change it a little bit so k here can be represented as l by r a okay length by radius into area and what is resistance really the resistance is nothing but the emf that is applied divided by the current that is created right that is how you can have the resistance so this is i'm um, sorry i just uh, made a little typo here so the resistance is the emf by just by ohm's law the emf divided by the current i that is created in the particular medium in this case there is a small thin uh, liquid column within the microcapillary and uh, you are creating or you are measuring the current i as you apply an external electric field e so e by i is the resistance in this case right so essentially again uh, as you know um, e by l is x right and area here is thing but uh, let's say pi r square you assume that r is the radius of uh, the thin microcapillary okay and i is the current and length uh, here is always accommodated in this x factor so k the conductivity is essentially i divided by x pi r square or there is a way that we can express x as i by k pi r square i could put this back into equation 4 here which we derived and uh, that way zeta can come out to be 4 pi neta phi divided by d times of i times of q which is actually equal to pi r square as we assumed in this other expression uh, divided by k times of pi r square okay so we remodify it a little bit and make this 4 pi neta k phi divided by d into i now i would like to uh, draw your attention to that uh, to the very fact that these are all measurable quantities you could measure the current value the dielectric constant is almost always known k is a property of the medium there are standard tables for that phi is the flow rate n is again the viscosity is again the property of the medium so with all these different properties or aspects of the medium and measuring the you know the flow rate per unit current you could always gauge what is the zeta potential of a particular surface and this is of immense importance in electrochemistry as well as microfluidics the way that zeta potential uh, changes uh, you know affects a lot of behavior okay so uh, so this uh, kind of uh, gives us Uh, uh you know a way out of trying to analyze electrosmotic flows within microcapillaries now let us actually uh, also for a comparison sake try to compare it what would happen if um, the these capillaries would have pressure driven flows okay so essentially we start investigating these microcapillaries with navier stokes equations uh, for different situations of pressure driven flows so before doing that uh, just to illustrate a little bit of uh, conceptual uh, you know things uh, we would investigate the covet flow which is essentially between you know two dimensional 
plates or surfaces parallel plates at a distance of uh, 2h which has a fluid in between okay. So, let me draw this out. So, this is like you have two surfaces surface 1 and 2 and you have a fluid in between and uh, what you are doing is you are trying to move this surface at a velocity v assuming there is a no slip zone the fluid kind of develops a velocity profile starting from 0 here v equal to 0 here all the way to about oh sorry u let us say the velocity of the fluid is a parameter u for convenience sake. So, uh, you have u equal to 0 here because of this zone of no slip and then the velocity slowly increasing to u equal to v the velocity of the plate here. So, you have a zone of no slip here you have a zone of no slip here. So, you can assume it as if you know this uh, zone of no slip leads uh, the fluid to move integrally as one part uh, fluid layer to move integrally as one part with the plate and this zone of no slip kind of rests it back and there is a velocity gradient which is obtained. So, let us uh, assume this to be u y okay, as a function of y. So, where y varies between plus h and minus h we place uh, the coordinate system in a manner so that origin is somewhere in the middle of the plate between the plates. So, this is the x y direction okay. and so we use the Navier Stokes equations to get an idea of uh, the velocity profile or the velocity equation. As I told you earlier we will be only discussing the conservation of uh, mass and conservation of momentum equations for microfluidics. Okay. So, for the conservation of mass equation we get du by dx plus dv by dy plus dw by dz equal to 0 v and w uh, do not make any sense because uh, we are assuming the v and w to be 0 there is no velocity along the z direction which is let us say into this plane and also along the y direction. So, there is really no circulating flow in the whole of this domain. So, there is only a unidirectional flow and u is basically non 0 and also a function of y the way that it varies the u varies is a function of y. Okay. So, essentially this and this terms would be 0 and so we are left with du by dx equals to 0 in this particular case. Similarly, if we apply the momentum equation, so applying on the conservation of momentum we have rho times of, so we have rho times uh, this u du by dx plus v times du by dy equals minus uh, pressure gradient dp by dx plus this inertial term rho gx plus viscosity times of del 2u by del x2 this is the shear term really del 2u by del y2. Okay. So, here as we know v is 0 as we had uh, made in the assumptions for the coit flow and du by dx has already been uh, obtained to be 0 from the earlier conservation of mass equations. Uh, we assume there is no pressure gradient it is just a movement of fluid trapped between two plates with one moving one fixed and there is no um, inertial component of the flow. Also d 2 u by dx 2 is 0 because du by dx itself is 0. So, therefore, we are only left with neta del 2 u by del y 2 equals 0. Okay. So, solution for this equation would be y equals c 1 u equals c 1 y plus c 2. Okay. So, that what uh, essentially del 2 u by del y 2 equal to 0 would mean and now we evaluate uh, this uh, particular equation under the boundary conditions where we already know that for y equal to minus h u is 0 and for y equal to plus h u uh, becomes equal to v. Okay. So, from the evaluation of this uh, equation we really find out u essentially as v by 2 h times of y plus v by 2 
okay. So this is the case of the Kuwait flow. Uh, we uh, also want to determine what happens if you have a pressure gradient which exists between these two flows and then you know essentially we want to plot the flow profile in that case and compare it with the flow profile of a electrokinetic flow as we have seen earlier, the electrosmotic flow as we have seen earlier. So here in the other case uh, we have this uh, the pressure driven flow where uh, in this particular case both plates are fixed. and there exists a finite pressure gradient okay that is why it is pressure driven. So, essentially you have uh, two fixed plates this is fixed and this is also fixed and u as a function of y in between and uh, so really the you know from the this conservation of uh, momentum equation can be written as rho times of u del u by del x plus v times of del u by del y equal to minus d rho by dp by dx to x which is actually a finite amount it exists in this case plus uh, the inertial term rho g x plus eta viscosity times of this is the shear term del 2 u by del x 2 plus del 2 u by del y 2. Okay. So, just uh, you know from the conservation of mass equation as we know already in the earlier uh, slide we had seen that du by dx in that case is 0 right. So, this component is 0 there is actually no v which exists in this particular case is again a unidirectional flow we only assume flow along the x direction. So, there is a velocity along the x direction, uh, but along the x direction uh, as you see by the conservation of uh, mass uh, there is no variation in u, the u only varies in the y direction. Okay. So, there is a finite uh, pressure difference in this case, this is really not a non-zero term, we assume no inertial effects, so rho g x is 0. By the way, one of the reasons why uh, no inertial effects are assumed uh, in case of you know uh, especially microfluidics or micro channel flows is because the volume of the mass uh, that is involved is uh, pretty low. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the inertial effects sometimes um, are really not that significant or that prominent as uh, its corresponding macroscopic uh, counterpart. So, microfluidics we normally assume until it is absolutely needed, we assume uh, the inertial uh, part of the flow, the, the you know the gravity term of the flow to be uh, you know kind of negligible. Okay. And so, we are left with uh, again d 2 u by d x 2 is 0 because du by dx itself is 0. So, we are left with d 2 u by dy 2. So, in this case uh, the equation takes the form eta del 2 u by del y 2 is equal to del p by del x okay, the pressure gradient. So, uh, there is a finite pressure gradient in this particular case. So, if we just uh, try to solve this particular equation uh, we are left with solution for u which is equal to neta I am sorry which is equal to 1 by 2 eta del p by del x uh, the pressure gradient times of y square plus some constant c 1 times y plus c 2. Let us investigate in this particular case uh, what happens really if you have a central axis here and y equal to 0 here and we assume y equal to plus h as the location spatial location of the upper plate and y equal to minus h as the spatial location of the lower plate. In that case uh, both the velocities here because they are fixed have uh, are zeros. So, u essentially the velocity close to both the plates okay, the upper and the lower plates are both the zeros in this case. So, u equal to 0 here, u equal to 0 here okay. both the planes essentially have zones of no slip. So, in that case uh, at y equal to plus h u becomes 1 by 2 n del p by del x square of h c 1 h plus c 2 and that is 0 and uh, at y equal to minus h u becomes 1 by 2 n del p by del x h square minus c 2 h c 1 h plus c 2 is also equal to 0. Okay. So, 
so therefore the only way you know uh, you could uh, uh, so you have to decipher what the c1 and c2 are in this particular case so from these two equations uh, you essentially have two unknowns and you know two different equations so it's a set of linear equations and you can solve them to find the c1 c2 so in this case the c1 comes out to be equal to 0 and c2 comes out to be equal to minus 1 by 2 eta delta p by delta x h square by 2 okay so if you put the c1 c2 values back into this particular equation here uh, you finally get uh, the final form of the equation as ui equal to 1 by 2 eta with a minus sign del p by del x which is the pressure gradient times h square to 1 minus y square by h square all right so if you plot this equation it's really the equation of a parabola because the u is varying as uh, the square of y okay so essentially uh, if you look at the flow profile here within this uh, particular channel that I would be just drawing in about a minute. So, you have two fixed plates here right and you have a central axis you have uh, y equal to 0 along this y is plus h here or y is minus h here and so essentially it is a parabola. So, u y is uh, varying as the square of y okay. So, essentially uh, you can draw the profile something like a parabola where there is a zone of no slip v u is 0 here and there is another no zone of no slip here and this profile here is the flow profile of a parabola uh, with velocities okay starting from y equal to 0 to y equal to plus h and y equal to minus h okay and u 0 at y equals 0 would really be equal to minus 1 by 2 neta del p by del x h square is also the maximum velocity as in this particular case you can see the parabola kind of uh, has a point of inflection here where uh, slope changes and so the maxima here in this case is corresponding to y equal to 0 and the u maxima comes out to be minus 1 by 2 eta dp by dx h square okay. So, you know if you assume uh, a different sign convention a different spatial location uh, in a manner as if uh, let us say this 2 h term this whole 2 h term here that you get as a dimension or the diameter of the cap capillary uh, is equated to something like a. So, that h is a by 2. So, in that case the u max would just uh, be written differently as 1 by 8 eta del p by del x times the square of a where a is the diameter okay. So, circular cross, cross section of a diameter a would essentially give a u max which is equal to um, minus 1 by 8 eta del p by del x into a square okay a is the diameter of this particular capillary. So, let us now try to calculate the volume flow rate uh, because this would be important from perspective of uh, later on um, you know trying to integrate that onto uh, the electrosmotic flow equation okay and uh, we can also compare the pressure driven flow with respect to the, the electrosmotic flow which was really the objective and uh, in terms of profile as you will find out in just about a little bit uh, the electrokinetic flow is really or the electrosmotic flow is really a plug like flow as opposed to the parabolic flow which is introduced. Uh, by you know the pressure driven flow. So, basically this brings us to you know the end of uh, this particular lecture. The next lecture we will be talking more about how to integrate the this pressure driven uh, flow kinetics and especially the flow rate with uh, the electrosmotic flows and then we will also be uh, beaming into uh, streaming potential as uh, essentially um, EMF caused by velocity of motion of a, of a charge layer with respect to a surface. Okay, thank you.